Hi, I'm Jody Cohen, and I'm super excited to have my friend Dr. Kirk Gare here, who is a trained functional medicine and functional neurology practitioner, and he works with pain and with lasers, and is going to talk a little bit about how the vagus nerve is involved in pain signals and how you can help basically return to factory settings with lasers so that it um, doesn't feel as intense. So Kirk, I'm super curious. Um, if you can just talk about kind of the vagus nerve and how you can work with the vagus nerve with lasers. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, the vagus nerve is extremely important because uh, we've got the whole gut-brain connection. To, uh, there's communication going back and forth between the two of them. And if those signals aren't moving properly up and down the vagus nerve, that can be a problem um, for not only just for digestive function, but also for overall pain. You can uh, ramp your body up more and say of a, a sympathetic kind of tone. Most of us are kind of in a, this sympathetic overdrive, like this stress state. And so you can think of it as like a seesaw that you've got your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system and you want those to be balanced or you want to have more of the parasympathetic going to kind of calm you down get the body into a relaxed state into a state where the body can heal and function normally and you get those signals from the brain down to the gut going properly for good digestion as well and anytime that gets out of balance and you've got too much of that sympathetic drive you can now increase what are called nociceptive firing of neurons which that those are just fancy word for pain neurons so pain's going to increase when you have that going on we look at the vagus nerve too we know that that uh, a lot of infections can start off in the gut and they can crawl up the vagus nerve, get into the brain and set up shop in there and trigger inflammation. And now they can start to affect brain function and even neurodegeneration. So when we look at lasers, like this is one of mine that I use for my office, this is a handheld version. <laughs> I also have some, some big ones that actually go around the body, but we'll take this one and we'll put it directly over the vagus nerve here and yeah. have patients do simple vagus nerve stimulation, like tilting their head back and gargling. And we can start to kind of reset that, uh, that pathway and stimulate more of the parasympathetic uh, type of pathway on there to dampen pain, dampen inflammation, and also improve that communication between the gut and the brain. And there's decades of research really going back to the 1960s on how lasers can impact the body, not just for pain and inflammation, but also neurologically. And what I find really fascinating is that uh, people think that lasers are new and experimental, but by 1974, the former Soviets, the USSR, had it as part of their state-sponsored standard medical care because they considered it was so effective, it saved them money and helped their patients more. So uh, yeah. it's got a long history. You know, you've, you've shared so much information. I wanna kind of unpack it a little bit more sure. slowly. So yeah. you talked about the vagus nerve and um, the perception of pain, and then you also talked about inflammation. Can we land a little bit more on, um, how being stuck in the parasympathetic state of the nervous system can trigger the experience of pain in the body. Yeah, well, if you're, yeah, if you're stuck in that sympathetic nervous system, you've got everything is, is ramped up and then you're gonna create an inflammatory state as well too. So that's one of the, one of the problems there is you're gonna get inflammation that can then go globally throughout the body. Yeah. And then you've kind of got an easy way to think of it is let's think of like, we've all have that car in the neighborhood or at, at your work that you know the slightest thing happens and that alarm's going off crazy. Is and, it kind and, of the, the cell danger response? Like yeah. when the cell thinks it's in danger, it inflames and it causes pain so you don't move so you can heal and you exactly. get stuck in that gear? You get stuck in that and then you get neurons that can get what we call close to threshold. That's kind of like when that car alarm is set too sensitive and someone just barely touches it, like a leaf falls on it and it goes off because right. it's just firing very quickly. Uh, and that's how your nervous system can be when you're in that sympathetic state to where, let's say a nerve normally needs the stimulus to go from here to there to start to, to fire. Well, when you're stressed out and you're in that sympathetic state, it could be resting right here. So a little bit of stimulus now can just aggravate it. You got neurons that are firing too much. If people are eating foods that have uh, excitatory neurotoxins in them, like monosodium glutamate, that's gonna put you more into that kind of state where you're, you're just, you're on edge. And yeah, like what? the people that throw their back out and they're so worried because the slightest little thing, like they, they live in fear that they're going to yep. slip back into pain all the time. Exactly. And then it can get looped back and forth to where now you've got to where the brain actually changes the way it processes pain information to where as you, you have these pain uh, signals that are going up to the brain. And if, if you move at the same time the pain happens, then there's a saying in neurology that what, what 
neurons that fire together will wire together. So if you start to get enough, every time you move, say your arm, if there's pain, now if the pain source goes away, just that movement can stimulate your brain to fire pain neurons too. So our bodies are adapting. They're kind of rewiring all of the time. And particularly when people are really stressed out, um, you can really have everything amped up and more inflammation and more sensitivity in these nerve pathways. I love that. You explained that so well. And this is Thank kind you. of, it's almost like a, um, a vicious cycle where they get stuck in that pain pattern. And what mm -hmm. I love about what you do is you help to unravel it and reset right. the body. And exactly. can you talk about, I know you work with pretty famous athletes along right. with just weekend warriors. How do you approach that? So the way that I approach it, there are basic ones that you can do. So the simple one is what people can also do at home if they have a, a laser or a light therapy type of device is really, let's say if you've got a painful shoulder, you can do it as simple as, let's say if I had my shirt off, I'm not going to do that right now. You know, but <laughs> yeah, this is a PGA ideal, show. <laughs> yeah, I, ideally, I would have the, the laser on the tissue. Let's say if I had mm -hmm. a painful arm, I would have it here. And at the same time, I would just do movements in the range of motion that doesn't increase the pain. So that way we can start to get those pathways to fire in a different way. So let's say if they can barely move it with no pain, then I have them barely move it. And I might have the laser going from here, even up to the head to do what's called transcranial laser therapy. And that way it starts to stimulate those nerve pathways to reset. Some fascinating things happen when you get a laser on the body, you're going to stimulate stem cell production. So you actually get tissue to repair. You're going to stimulate nitric oxide, which that helps to dilate the blood vessels and so you actually get blood pressure to lower which we know that can help you to come back to more of a parasympathetic I think, I think that's state. what oils do too is they yes, help exactly. vasodilate anything that you can exactly. do basically to increase the blood flow and the fluid movement mm -hmm, helps with mm -hmm. the healing that's great so uh, light uh, light does that Right. Light does that. Um, and one of the things I love to do in my office when I have, let's say I have an athlete or just have anybody who's very stressed out is we'll get them to smell oils while we have the laser on them uh, transcranially as well. So what happens there is they're, they're breathing in the oil. You get all the benefits of the oil. Plus you're now stimulating the olfactory centers in the brain. That's going to cause blood to go to that area. So if while they're doing that, we have the laser on them, it's going to draw more of the energy from the laser that's gotten into the blood vessels into that particular area because you're stimulating those nerve pathways on there. So those are some of the things we'll do. We can get more complicated with the lasers too, where I will actually go through, we'll test a muscle and find which one is weak. And then we'll laser over the nerves that control that muscle while we're getting to activate that muscle that's weak. And you can strengthen up an athlete, a weekend warrior, or just someone who says, oh man, my shoulder's been hurt for a long time. And you can now change the neurology and then people always will say after they're done oh my god i feel so much more relaxed because now the nervous system's more balanced signals are going properly to those muscles so they're firing right and there's less tension throughout the whole system and that gets them more into a parasympathetic state too well the other thing that you said that i want to really touch on is this idea of getting them to threshold you want to challenge the muscle up till the point where you feel pain but not go right. beyond that pain can you Correct. speak to that a little bit more yeah, it's important because especially I played 11 years of football, high school and college football. And back in the 80s, we would every time we'd go in the gym, it was like, no pain, no gain. You know, you oh, got yeah. just throw Isn't pain that the Jane Fonda thing? Oh, yeah. Pain is weakness leaving the body, you know, all this stuff. And well, <laughs> now we know that that's not necessarily the best thing that you can do because, again, there's a neurological loop where if I every time I do this, if I push it to the point of pain, right. my brain can now link pain with that movement together and it can become problematic so in, in certain people more so than others like particularly if we look at let's say you probably have some autoimmune patients that are watching this and we know from some of the great research dr detis karazian has done is that if you push a workout too hard and you have yeah. an autoimmune condition you can now crash that system out and that was something that was yes. hard for me to learn over because exercising of I, yeah. no one, he talks about that so much and no one else is really giving it enough exactly. time no, they, they, they aren't. And for me, that was really hard as a, as a male coming out of that testosterone driven kind of thing where you're trying to push harder and heavier and doing two hour workouts. I started to find that even though I looked good at the time, I felt like crap. I was just mm -hmm. crashed out and it would take me days to recover. And then I finally had to learn to do 
less of a workout, like, you know, a much shorter time and without the same kind of intensity. So I didn't, I didn't overload my body, didn't overload the nervous system too. So if you've got patients who have like, uh, or, or listeners who have brain fog or different kind of brain issues, it's the same thing. You do too much or too intense of an, of an exercise and now you can fatigue different neurons and neuron yeah. fluids in the brain and crash them out. And now you've got several days. So it's, again, trying to find the balance. even little kids with homework, you know, yes, like there's exactly. a reason they teach simple multiplication before they get into calculus. You need to kind of find that sweet spot. It's like balancing mm-hmm. on a tightrope, right? Enough exactly. that it's stimulatory, but not so much that it, it is um, a challenge. And, and I'm curious how lasers kind of help with that because it seems like they expedite or enhance anything you're already doing. They do. They do. So let's take, let's take for example, I got my my, my laser here that I've got going, this is a combination red and violet laser. And this one actually has specific research on it. It's got a patent as a laser that does parasympathetic and sympathetic. What's the name activity. of the laser? This one is the Erconia EVRL. Okay. So EVRL stands for Erconia Violet and Red Laser because we found that like violet lasers will tend to stimulate more of the sympathetic nervous system if done by themselves. Red lasers will stimulate the parasympathetic to kind of calm you down. And if you do them both together, it actually gets the body to kind of balance that seesaw out on itself. So when we're looking at with lasers, one of the things that happens is we get it on the body and it's going to be confusing to people because they're going to say, well, that just looks like a bar, like a a barcode scanner or a laser leveler. (laughs) Well, well, think about it. If you go out in sunlight, um, when sunlight hits your skin, you're going to absorb that energy. You're going to make vitamin D. And even if you just get sunlight on your, on your arm, it's going to go globally throughout your body. So there's a misconception when it comes to laser and light therapy that it's only affecting that area. You get the most absorption in that area, but it goes globally throughout the body. And you'll get things like uh, you know, vitamin D production, uh, melanin production for a suntan or melatonin to affect sleep-wake cycles. Like I have a friend, uh, some doctors who are up in, uh, Nor- in uh, Norway, and they're so far north, they said they have two days a year. It's, it's day <laughs> and then it's night. Because they get, Seattle he says, 23 like hours. that when I was a kid. Was it? Yeah. And so he said, he said, yeah, we got two days. He said, I said, what's that like? He said, well, you know, we're so affected by, by light affecting our moods. He said, in the, win- he said in the winter time, it's like everybody sleeps all day. He says, we drink lots of vodka and everybody's depressed and we get nothing done. So what's it like in the summer when you have a lot of light? He says, it's the exact opposite. Everybody's happy. We hardly sleep like three hours a day. We get all the work done and it's a big party all the time. So light affects us like that. When we have lasers, when I get a laser, uh, like let's say as I put the laser here on my on my brain. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the laser doesn't penetrate through the skull. The skull does block a good amount of it, but the, uh, Erconia did a research study on autistic kids showing that the laser does penetrate and they have functional MRIs to show changes in blood flow and in neuronal, ac- neuronal activity. So when I get that laser on there, one of the things we're going to do is stimulate ATP production, which is an energy molecule. So right. if you can, if you can light, produce more light energy. Light activates, it, well, they believe it activates the um, structured water in the cells to sure yeah yeah it does that yeah it stimulates the mitochondria which is your powerhouse of your cells when you pulse the light it also creates a so let's say if you took your oil and you put your oil on the skin and then you put a pulsed laser on there that pulses between one and ten hertz it creates a pulsing or a pumping in that cell the cell membrane will oscillate and it'll draw the oil or nutrients or someone's on medications it draws them better into the cells that's what i think epsom salt bounds do too they just anything that kind of opens up the the flow right you know Yeah, exactly. And then so we've got the lasers are making this mitochondria, they're making the mitochondria make more ATP. Uh, And and a fascinating thing is a new study showed it specifically targets uh, unhealthy cells. So let's say if you've got on your body, you've got certain cells that are unhealthy and stressed. Um, They got a lot of uh, inflammation or whatnot. When you get a laser on an inflamed cell, Inside the mitochondria, there's a little engine in there called a rotor that normally spins at about 9,000 revolutions per minute. And when you have a cell that's stressed, then the water around it, as you mentioned earlier, the water around it gets thick and sluggish, like a car that has old motor oil in it. And so that rotor doesn't spin fast anymore. When you put a laser on on a sick and inflamed cell, it very quickly changes that that water tension, it's like taking WD-40 and spraying it in a cell, and now these rotors can spin fast and you create a lot of energy in the cell. And that goes throughout the body. And then you create things called like brain-derived neurotrophic factor to make new nerve connections. Right, um, right, you're gonna, which is really important. Very important. To avoid dementia. Absolutely, absolutely. When you talk about dementia too, if you pulse the light or the laser at 40 hertz, that's even been shown to break up some of the tau proteins and amyloid beta that's in the brain. So there's some which is emerging correlated research. with Alzheimer's. Basically, exactly. you're just helping to move the debris. 
it basically, what yep. I love about uh, a lot of these non-invasive therapies, light, sound, oils, mm -hmm. is that it seems to kind of reboot the, um, the sick parts and, and exactly. get them back to factory settings without mm -hmm. in any way harming anything else. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I tell patients that we're doing. I said, you know how when you have your phone and it's not working right, your computer, and sometimes you just got to press the power button and hold it and reset it. That's basically what we're doing with your nervous system with the laser is just trying to reboot that whole nervous system. I call it in my office, I tell patients we're going through, we're going to recalibrate your nervous system because yes. we'll test each, each muscle. And then if one is weak, we'll use the laser in a way to reset that pathway and recalibrate it to get them to function better. Whether that's the vagus nerve, we do a lot of vagus nerve recalibrations. I'll, I'll have patients that will come in and, and a good way for people to know that their vagus nerve is not working properly is if they have chronic constipation, that's a big one, you know, yes. the slow, slow gut motility. Be yes, uh, or, because the vagus nerve innervates the whole digestive path and, and turns on the housekeeping wave. So that exactly. Right, exactly. Um, and, and another one too is, you know, is they have difficulty swallowing pills. So if I have a patient that comes into my office and I say, doc, I can't take pills. You need to give me a powder. I learned this from Dr. Karajan. If they tell you that, that's warning sign number one, that they've got an issue there of how the vagus nerve is firing. So well, that's and, what we And do. the other easy thing for us girls, yeah. um, any kind of ridges on the nails because mm -hmm. the vagus nerve um, triggers the, the stomach to release hydrochloric acid, which right. helps you break down your nutrients and if you're constantly Absolutely. testing low in certain vitamins or you have ridges on your nails that means that your nutrients aren't actually being absorbed and assimilated properly yeah correct correct and so when you stimulate that you affect so much in your body you know yes digestion brain health you know overall decreasing stress we know when you're stressed out that leads to neurodegeneration as well too neurodegeneration pain etc so if we can reboot those pathways and calm the system down it makes a, a big difference well, and, and when and you talk there's a theory that it's aging. I think Denise yeah. Karazian talks about this, that yes. you know, um, decline is additive and cumulative. And if your right. vagus nerve isn't functioning, it, you might feel like, oh, I'm just getting old. Oh, I'm getting fat. Oh, I'm getting mm -hmm. forgetful. But no, mm -hmm. it's just that over time, the function keeps going down and down and down. And yes. rebooting Absolutely. the vagus nerve allows the information, the energy, the resources to flow mm -hmm. to the cells. Yeah, absolutely. And, and particularly when you're using laser devices to try to stimulate those pathways, laser has a lot of anti-aging properties. You know, it's, it's fascinating if you look at the research in there for regenerative medicine and lasers. Um, you know, I use it on my brain on a daily basis. Uh, growing up, I had uh, ADHD and all, also Tourette's. I had tics. I was blinking. I was whistling. I was grunting, all of these things. I learned how to control it, but there was always that urge there, like that urge to do the tics. It was using the lasers that really helped to change that. And then also Dr. Karazian's amazing advice as far as when it came to eliminating the foods that were also triggering those pathways. So stacking those two together made a huge difference. And the reason I'm able to do all the things I do with traveling to lecture and seeing patients is because of what lasers have done to improve my brain. I feel like it's working a lot better now than it, than it ever has. I don't need as much sleep as I used to. I can learn things more quickly. There's just amazing things you can do when you support the system um, you know, and support its natural pathways. You mentioned um, red laser and violet laser. Are mm -hmm. there other colors that you work with and what do they do? There are other colors. So, you know, you can go into, there's, there's infrared ones, there's green ones. There's a lot of different types of lasers that are out there. The bulk of the research on lasers and light therapy usually falls within the visible red spectrum and in the infrared spectrum where you can't see it. But those are the ones where there's the most research on them. Okay. When we look at green lasers, like uh, uh, the there's a, like Arconia has a green laser that does cellulite treatment and oh, okay. uh, fat reduction as well too. So it has a different effect so on lymphatic. these tissues. Um, yeah, and also it's, 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 it's lymphatic and it's also re removing some of the scar tissue there that can create some of the puckering with the, uh, with say cellulite. Um, when we look at the violet lasers, there's a whole bunch of research on infections. So especially I, I, I talk a lot with my patients about how violet lasers can actually uh, have this antimicrobial and, and virucidal effect. There's research on it both out of the body and in the body to where when you get a violet wavelength laser, there's studies on it with MRSA showing it, can, it has a 92% effectiveness rate, rate against MRSA, you know, the uh, uh, antibiotic resistant um, staph infections. There are some new studies too on it with coronaviruses, with Khaleesi virus, with noroviruses, all these different things. So I see that as emerging in the future. That's where we look at the violet wavelength really has a lot of antimicrobial. And, and where, for, for the antimicrobial benefit, would they apply it over their gut? Does it not matter? Yeah. 
that's what I usually do. So like what I'm doing at home, I have my laser at home right now. I'm out in California. So I'm using my laser on myself, on my wife and on my, my cats as well too. We use it on them. So what I do is I'll go into the oh, mouth okay. so that I can really hit the, hit the tonsils. If nice. the tonsils aren't there still, you think the mouth is an entry point for yes. a lot of, a lot of yes. microorganisms getting in. So Dietrich Klinghart I'll calls the tonsils, the toilet of the mouth. Yeah, basically, basically. They... basically. <laughs> so I like to hit that there. Also, there's a lot of blood vessels there to try to get the energy from the laser up and into the brain. Oh. I will then also do it over the, over the neck to hit the right. vagus nerve. I'll right. do that while I do some vagus nerve stimulation. Either I'll take some water. I learned these from Dr. Karazian. Tilt the head back and try to gargle really hard. Just right. <clears throat> the nerve, it, it, it innervates the mouth. And so like exactly. gagging, gargling, gagging, anything singing. you can do, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's so many different things you can do but like for your listeners at home try to gargle you know and if you have trouble gargling like when i have patients with a bad vagus nerve at home they'll try to gargle and they'll be like and it's not working we'll do these i'll have them do the vagus nerve exercises at home on a daily basis of doing the gargle exercise and we'll do it with a laser in the office and i've seen people go from like that to sounding like a motorboat within a couple of weeks and then they're like oh my gosh my digestion's so much better so i hit there i like to hit over the thymus what you're talking about too is is vagus nerve stimulation and it's kind of like weightlifting if you go to the gym and lifting five pounds is going to kill you. The more you keep doing it, you can gradually work up to 10 to 15. It just gets easier right. with practice. And the more you can stimulate your vagus nerve, the more your vagus nerve can kind of turn on your digestion and everything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right there. Um, yeah. So I, I go after the vagus nerve, I'll go to the thymus, which is mid chest. Again, yeah. I do it without the, I do it without my shirt on. And then I like to sweep over the gut too. Now, some naysayers will say, Oh, it doesn't penetrate to that level. Uh, look, it's when we look at lasers and light therapy, it's not just about penetration. It's also about creating this systemic effect of this photobiomodulatory effect. The Russians have been doing that since the 1970s of doing things over the gut, doing things over the lungs, over the thymus. And, and by systemic studies. effect, what you're basically saying is if you can reset one piece of it, the whole part resets. It's like a recalibration. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't stay just there. It's like, let's think about when people have to put on a hormone cream you just put it on one area does the hormone cream just stay there yeah no it goes it's everywhere it's yeah. everywhere or when you let's say you do your essential oils and you smell it is it only affecting your sinuses no it's not it's resetting the whole nervous system so right. it's important for people to understand the interconnectedness of the whole body that you have these global global effects on areas even if something doesn't directly penetrate to that structure you can still impact it well, and um, actually to that point, you had mentioned there are some studies on lasers directly affecting the parasympathetic and sympathetic yeah. systems. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so it's pretty fascinating. And again, the the company whose lasers I use, Erconia, they spend a lot of money on, on research. So out of all the, there's tw right now there's like 21 different FDA clearances for laser therapy devices. Mm -hmm. Their research has led to 18 of those clearances. So they do wow. double and quadruple blind studies, like the one they just completed in, uh, in Cuba on autistic kids was a quadruple blind study to show the differences between kids who were receiving laser therapy versus a placebo device. And that's been submitted to the FDA, hopefully for a first um, clearance for, uh, for treatment of autism. The interesting thing about that on a side note is, you know, you see how fast they'll rush drugs to be cleared. Uh, this research has been submitted to the FDA since o October of 2018, and they're still working on clearing it, even though they've got all the data in what, there. What so, did the research find? The research found that these kids had better focus. They had less uh, behavior outbursts. Yeah. Um, and, and overall, overall the, the kids just did so much better. It was phenomenal, the difference between the control and the placebo group. And then what they did is six months later, they took the kids who were in the control group and put them through the laser group. And now you saw changes in there. So they, they became like their own placebo versus control group on there. To yeah, and we, no we find that with the oils too. Um, Stephen yeah. Porges, who wrote the polyvagal theory, hypothesized that, you know, you see kids, autistic kids doing these self-stimulation movements that he believes right. are trying to activate the vagus nerve because yep. they are stuck in the cell danger response sympathetic state. So if you can right. get them to calm, and for people who are listening the way I describe it, if you've ever been in traffic and someone cuts you off and you don't care, you're fine. And then the next yep. day, the same thing happens and four letter words fall out of your mouth. The difference right. is you're in the parasympathetic state when the first thing happened and, and outside stressors don't bother you because yep. you're in resilience. And so right. 
the lasers basically are helping a, a really challenged population that really yes. struggles to get into resilience, get into resilience. So if exactly. we can help the most extreme population, you know, those of us that, you know, just get hangry are probably yeah. in good shape. Exactly. And, and along those lines, I'm going to, again, quote my mentor, uh, good friend, Dr. Karazian. Uh, he really helped me understand some of these loops of what's going on there. So when we talk about these kind of populations, or let's say someone who's just in that sympathetic overdrive, also a big gating area is going to be the cerebellum. So that's your mm. balance and coordination area. Uh, one of the things you could do to see how well that's working is just do a balance test. Stand up, put your feet together, close your eyes and see, do you sway? And if you do, then you've got an issue with your cerebellum. If you don't do it there, then close your eyes, put your feet uh, heel to toe <clears throat> and try to stand with your eyes closed. You should be able to stand hands to your side and not wobble back and forth. If you start falling over, you've got some cerebellar issues that are going on there. You're more likely to have that too. Let's say if someone has Hashimoto's. Yeah, Hashimoto's and really correlated a lot of they thyroid do. issues with the cerebellum. And right. And this is actually to your point, because yeah. I have Hashimoto's and I started yeah. doing yoga and yes. it made a huge difference in my ability to balance. It's kind of exactly you basically find what you're not good at and do it to the point of threshold. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. You do that. And what a lot of people and doctors don't understand is that those TPO antibodies can cross react with cerebellar tissue and trigger damage. Right. And then that can affect your balance. Now, what people don't understand is how that can affect that can affect an autistic kid for controlling movement, a kid like myself who had symptoms of pandas and also, you know, Tourette's, etc because the cerebellum gates some of the firing of those neurons. And so we're, some people will have their cerebellum not functioning right, and then it can kind of misfire into areas of the brain, into the emotional centers, and now that can amp them up as well too, to make them feel stressed out. So when we get a laser and we take it and we do it over the, the cerebellum, while we do some balance exercises, what we're doing is a few things. Those TPO antibodies, those thyroid antibodies, research by Hoffling out of Brazil shows that laser can decrease those TPO antibodies. So that protects the thyroid, that protects also the, um, the cerebellum. And you can also stimulate brain-derived neurotrophic factor to start to heal up some of these areas too. And so that's one of these different loops that helps in overall keeping you into that more parasympathetic state where you're in this, this more balanced kind of state where you're, as you said, are resilient. That's the loop of how lasers can kind of help that whole pathway there. And just a final question, because I know you work with a lot of athletes and I'm, I'm yeah. curious kind of what your experience has been with the laser and pain and helping people return to, um, you know, healthy it's, movement. And yeah, it's, it's pretty phenomenal with that because it's, it's given me in, in the area where I am in Southern California, it's a hotbed for talent. Um, we have so many, so many players say, especially in major league baseball right. come from literally like a 30 mile radius from where my office is. So I have, I'll start working with kids when they're 11 or 12. And later on, you see them in the major league baseball. Uh, one of my patients was picked sixth overall in the major league baseball draft last year, which was so exciting to have worked with that kid when he was in high well, school. And that, that repetitive motion, especially for the pitchers, yeah. they really are yes. going to need yeah. some help. They are. And especially when you look at, let's talk about sports in general. So I'm sure a lot of your listeners right now have kids and kids who are in sports. The sports world has changed since I grew up in the 70s and 80s to where now it's this pressure cooker and kids are starting single sports specialization at the age of five or six. And they're already looking as a young kid at the stress of, I got to get into college and sports is my ticket into college. Because, you know, the parents want them to do it in a way different than Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman. You know, <laughs> instead of doing my, my daughter <laughs> does row crew and it does. She, oh, her I had workouts to really make her are yeah. intense. Yes, intense. They, they are. And they're every day, pretty much, and they're every weekend, and they're stressed out. They're every out. day for hours, yeah. Hours, hours. And kids are already, I've seen kids talking about what college they're going to go to at 11 or 12, like this pressure cooker of it. And so they're stressed out. So when we get them in, and what I've seen is kids coming in who have these, because they're playing all the time, you know, every week of the year, pretty much not shut down, they'll have chronic injuries, chronic inflammation. And we get a laser on them, and all, I've had it to where – I had one particular kid come in with a knee injury from he was playing basketball at the time. He came in literally on crutches. I go through the protocol with my lasers to reset his nervous system. And I, I'll start him off uh, with doing a squat. This kid couldn't even do a squat or a lunge. As soon as I got done with him, after about 10 minutes of treating him, he gets up and does a squat and a lunge, no pain, to where his dad even says, 
are you sure you were in a hurt or were you, were, you, were you faking it? Because we can get such a rapid change in what their, what their pain levels are that it's created this reputation. I have athletes who go off to college. I have one athlete fly back to see me from Vanderbilt, another one from uh, universities in Texas, all across the U.S., where their coaches let them leave mid-season for an injury because their trainers weren't able to work with them. They come out to see me, spend a week with me doing the lasers and go back, and we've got them back in, in uh, really tip-top shape. Um, we even see it for enhancing sports performance. There was one particular study in the Journal of Biophotonics that showed that athletes who get laser have a um, unfair advantage <laughs> over athletes who don't get laser. That was what the basically what the researchers said. They're like, man, it was as if they had performance enhancing drugs because the athletes were stronger. They had uh, more endurance. They recovered from their exercises faster. And their conclusion was, they said, we're not sure this should be allowed in international competition because it gave an unfair <laughs> advantage. So I actually share that with my athletes and they love an unfair advantage, especially if it doesn't have any side effects, doesn't have any harm to them. So those are some of the things we've seen. Um, I've had athletes that were supposed to be out, let's say in the worst case scenario where they had a surgery. I had a girl who had what was called the terrible triad, where she had a uh, meniscal tear, an ACL ligament tear, and an MCL ligament tear, and she was supposed to be out for a year. We literally got her back in four months to where she was That's able amazing. to wrestle. And, and I really year. hope it, it lands with people. Like when you can kind of put your nervous system in the right gear where healing is right. possible, and then you know work on specific areas of the body, you can you can see dramatic improvement. It's you can. I, I'm so grateful that you came on. And where can people sure. find out more information about you and your lasers? So they want to find out more information about me. They can go onto my webpage, which is laserchiropractic.net. And that's laser with an S. Um, I also am on Facebook, so they can find me. Just search my name, Dr. Kirk Gare, G-A-I-R. I'm, I'm fortunate that I come from one of the smallest Scottish clans, so it's a very rare surname. There's literally three of us in the whole world named Kirk Gare, so it's easy to find me if you search me there. I have a patient um, group on Facebook. If people want to join that, they're welcome to do that. And that's where I'm sharing videos and Facebook Lives and information on there. They can just search Dr. Gare's patient page. Um, and, and if, if they, they want wanted to find a practitioner that you've trained could they find that on your facebook page or yeah they can find that there they can message me there i also have a site called cold laser practitioner forum they can connect with doctors on that one as well i do have doctors i train doctors around the world and internationally i do things um, both uh, in the united states and abroad and uh, they can message me um, online and i can try to put them in contact with someone who knows what they're what they're doing to help them out in, in their area. This was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thanks for having me. And I think it's fantastic what you're doing. It's going to help a lot of people sharing this information.